Welcome back to Road to Fire. We're a family of three documenting our journey to fire. Financial independence, we tire early. Let's chat about our September budget. I will share our short August budget recap, details on our household income, and outline our expected expenses for the month with all the numbers like always, so please hang with me. So I'm going to Anchorage, Alaska this month. That is all. <laughs> that is all I wanted to share in this video. But as you can tell, I am stoked. Last trip was in July and prior to COVID, my little family and I used to travel almost monthly. So going through a little bit of a withdrawal right now. My son and husband won't be joining me as it will be just me and my high school girlfriend, but I am still so excited for this trip. Alaska has always been on my list and I figured that most people won't be trekking up there in September and I hope to catch a glimpse of a couple of whales. Our budget will be a bit different this month. Not only is it a three pay period month, we prepaid my son's daycare so that bill won't show up as well. So our income and expenses will definitely look lopsided this month, but in a good way. Cash is still king for us, so we are stashing away as much as we can because we are expecting to put in an offer in a house this month. By the time this video goes up, I hope our offer was accepted. Fingers crossed. So August was a disaster. I spoke about this briefly in my last video, but it was probably the worst budgeting month this year. Here's a quick recap on some items in our budget last month, but I like to share the items where we were over more than 5% or under more than 5%. This month, we had so many overage items that I chose the top four worst items. August was the month of events, which definitely contributed to these higher costs. First is groceries. We plan to spend $300 for our family of three, and we usually are around this, but we ended up around $353. Biggest change is that I now have to pack lunch for my son and a snack. That is about 10 more meals a week that we did not account for. He isn't a big eater, but kitty snacks aren't cheap. Next is restaurants. We planned $300 and spent $448. First, let me say my husband went to a bachelor party that included a dinner at a steakhouse. The bill was split evenly and came out to be about $140 per person. So that alone tipped us over, but he had fun and he never splurges, so it was definitely worth it. Plus, we were also on the road a lot seeing houses, sometimes over 15 minutes away from where we currently lived, forcing us to quote unquote have dinner on the road, which is also an excuse, but also contributed to us going over budget. Then there is apparel. I budgeted $50 and we spent $203. First, this was a major mistake on my end. I just didn't think this month through clearly. My son needed a picture day outfit because, well, first day outfits are a must. Then he needed a little suit, which is hard to find as he's three foot seven and only four. So his legs are uber long, but he's so slim and only H&M. No, no for fast fashion, but they had a suit for him. So I blew this line at him, but for a good cause in a sense. And last is personal care. We plan $100, but spend $244. I didn't know how much my professional hairstyle would cost, plus nails, and my husband and son decided to get their haircuts done by a barber versus me. I get it, I'm not the best at fades and my hands are a little shaky, but overall that took us over on this line item. We were over on many items that caused us to save a bit less than we expected or desire and you'll see that hit our savings rate for the month. So our budgeting steps have not changed, but I love to outline it just to show how easy budgeting really is, well at least for us. We only have three steps. My husband and I use a joint Capital One card, I do have a link to the card below if you're interested, which we use for nearly all of our expenses. Again, a few companies prefer direct checking account payments versus credit cards. Next is we automate all of our savings. We make slight adjustments month over month as our income does fluctuate slightly, but all of our investing transactions are almost automatically set for the year. Lastly, we have bi-weekly check-ins just to help us stay on track for the remainder of the month and make adjustments as needed. I create our budget in Excel and I do have a template in my description box below that you can download for free if you want to check it out. But I wanted to state the obvious that this is our budgeting steps. Do and find a process that works best for you and your household. September is a three pay period month for us or shall I say for my husband. I get paid twice a month all year round but my husband is on a bi-weekly schedule and September is the lucky month for us. We are not getting paid more, but it does feel like it for this one single month. So because we have additional income this month, we will be able to hit our sinking fund goals and cash needs quicker than I thought. I budget month to month, so I didn't plan ahead for a three pay period month, but it works. On another note, I see that my 401k contributions are right on my plan, but my husband's is slightly off, so we'll make adjustments in this month as well. It probably won't grow through until maybe the second pay period, so I made estimates for the remainder of the year. 
Honestly, my long-term goal is to get our income to be about $15,000 a month post-taxes consistently. Maybe next year we can start seeing that as a number for us overall. Okay, here's our September income report. Our W-2 is now 86% of our income, and that is due to our passive income decreasing, mainly driven by YouTube. Although anything from YouTube is still a pleasant surprise, so I'm 100% grateful for any income from that. So here are the details. Our W-2 income is now $12,746, and this represents after 401k and HSA contributions. This is an increase from last month, but it's inflated due to the additional pay period. We have no planned bonuses this month, so they'll be at zero. Nothing new here as we get our bonuses once a year, although my last company had almost quarterly profit sharing checks, and I do miss that. Our passive income for this month includes YouTube from August, our rental income, and a few other small sources. They're tiny, but I always add them in here. This month is expected to be around $1,875. YouTube income last month was higher than expected, especially since I posted less, so I'm happy overall with this number. Site hustle income has decreased now to $100. I'm just kind of relaxing this month as August really took a toll on me. And we have that other section for the child care tax that's coming in at around $167. So our total expected income for September will be around $14,888, which is about $1,700 higher than last month. Keep in mind that a part of my husband's income goes to a separate business account, so it's not 100% accounted in our family budget here. So I really tightened up our expenses this month because of August. I really wanted to make sure that we had ample buffer on our variable expenses, feeling much better about this month's budget overall as of right now. We always leave a buffer in our budget, but this month I added them to some of our problem line items as well, just as an additional buffer. Now our budget will look different as our top five expenses have changed for the first time in, I don't know, maybe years. We don't have our usual childcare expenses this month because my son's new school provided a discount if you paid quarterly versus monthly, so we did that. But let's jump into the details right now. So here's our September expense report or our monthly budget. Our top five categories this month are savings, mortgage, tithe, car payment, and a new one is travel. Because I'm splitting my travel expenses with my friend, I do think I'm overestimating here. So our savings rate this month is planned to be 55%, which will be one of our highest savings month yet if we hit this number. I'm happy to see this. 84% will be put into our sinking funds and 16% will be sent to investing. Weird split, I know, but things will go back to normal in October. Overall, our total expenses are just under $14,800. So let's get into the details. We always pay ourselves first and that will never change. We plan to save $8,200 this month. Now I had to double check our budget over and over again to make sure this was right. And yes, this is a high amount for us. So our mortgage is the same month over month. It includes everything from taxes to PMI and that is fixed at $1,964. Next is tithing and this also never changes. We believe in tithing 10% of our income and that will be around $1,489 this month. Next is our last car loan or our car payment, and that would be around $700 this month. My plan is to make more side hustle income this month to hopefully send a few more payments, but we'll see how that goes. Rounding off our top five expenses is travel. This will cover my expenses while in Alaska for just about a week. And we budgeted $475 for that. Again, I think I'm overestimating here. I'm also thinking about taking a family trip up north right before the winter, so I expect travel to be in our top five again for next month. So groceries have increased to $340 to accommodate the additional meals I'm making for my son. We'll see how this month goes overall, and so I hope that we'll be on budget this time. So our utilities have increased to $338 this month as we have to pay a local sewage tax. Utilities also include our gas, electricity, internet, and our cell phones. So restaurants, it's still set at $300 as I am really reluctant to increase it as then our spending will definitely get out of hand. So the $300 kind of work as a mental anchor for us, at least for now. But for car gas, it has increased to $255. But once we get our new house, it will decrease a lot as we'll be able to use our at-home charger versus superchargers for our Tesla. So I definitely can't wait. So we have an HSA and that means we have to pay out-of-pocket expenses until we hit our $5,000 deductible. So I expected a few medical expenses this month and budgeted around $250. Entertainment stays fixed month over month, and that includes our Netflix subscription, YouTube TV for sports, and then fun money for my husband and I. Household items include toiletries, cleaning supplies, hand soap, or any time we run to Home Depot. I always set this around $130. 
So our childcare only includes my son's activities this month. He's in basketball and we also have small spend money for him to get things he might need for school or new books at Goodwill. So we're budgeting over around $125 for him. Apparel is set at $50. We don't have a need for new clothes this month, but again, you just never know. And last but not least is business and that is set at $25 and that is the monthly cost associated with running this YouTube channel. So total expenses for September is $14,787 with about $100 buffer from income to expenses. But I did include buffers in all of our variable expenses as well. And I'm not going to say I'm confident about this budget as that's what I said last month, but it looks good so far. So here's our 2021 after tax savings rate tracker. Target for the year is to save at least 50% of our income, which has proven to be harder than expected. We ended August savings rate just under 41% with a target of about 43%. So just shy of where we expected to be. We plan this month to have a savings rate of about 55% if everything goes as we budgeted. If we hit our savings rate in September, we'll have a 2021 year-to-date savings rate average of about 47%, which is lower than our target, but still good overall. Keep in mind that this percentage might seem low, but our overall number we're saving each month is still increasing. Goals, goals, and more goals. Here are my personal September monthly goals. My husband and I have joint monthly goals as well that span from physical, spiritual, mental, relational, and financial. But this here looks at my own personal financial goals. Last month, I didn't hit any goal, but was close on almost all of them, so I still count that as a silent win in a way. This month, I want to first meditate for 10 minutes a day just to slow down my days a bit and dwell more in the present moment. Second goal is to attend two Phi local chapter meetings. I usually make one, but hope to push to make another one this month. We should be closing on our house in September, so I hope to start planning our move for some time in October. So that's a new thing I'm focusing on is what will our overall budget be for moving? And although we have a savings rate target of 55%, I would be happy with anything over 50% and that would be a win for me. So I'm shooting towards at least 50% for this month. So these are my four goals for the month. Share your number one goal for the month in September in the comments below. September has to be better than August. Now, if we split our monthly budget into two, one for my husband and one for myself, my husband would have no problem hitting his budget because he's the saver and while well, I'm the spender. I will say the first two weeks of every month, I'm a conscious spender. And after the 15th, I just get taxed out by tracking just a wee bit if I'm going to be honest here. My husband does keep me grounded though, and I'm so thankful for him. I'm still working on a few consulting and partnership projects that hopefully pan out. So fingers crossed on that as well. I am always searching for more streams of income while sidestepping burnout. <laughs> it's always trying to find that balance between the two. But if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. But don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. Until next time.